Alright, so welcome everybody to Cordoba, capital. We are no longer in Buenos Aires. We are in Cordoba, capital. New city, new province, province of Cordoba. Cordoba, Cordoba, place so nice. They named it twice, just like New York, New York. And uh, where are we headed today? Today, we're going to go to the house, the former house. It's a museum now, kind of like all the old houses around Argentina. I guess if you're famous enough and you die, then uh, they turn your house into a museum and then people can, like me can go see it. Now we're walking over this river. That river, by the way, is uh, the Primero River, also known as, I think, the Sus Susquia? Susquia River. Anyway, it's a pretty important, actually, river. Uh, it didn't, doesn't look that big, but it's a pretty important river to uh, the history of Cordoba, and certainly through all these videos that we're going to do in Cordoba. I'm going to talk more about that river. Uh, but anyway, where are we going? We're going to the house of former house of uh, Rafael de Sobramante and uh, doing some you know research into the history of Cordoba one of the things I found was well Buenos Aires has always kind of been the capital of Argentina even back in the like uh, Spanish colonial days uh, Cordoba was capital twice in history uh, and one of those times was when Rafael de Sobramante was uh, the viceroy of what at the time was called the Rio de la Plata, the River of Silver. So this is like back in the Spanish colonial times. Uh, and uh, yeah, Cordoba became the capital. And it's an interesting story why. And uh, we got a bit of a walk. But as we get closer to, uh, to the uh, place where we're going, the house, the museum, I'll let you know a little bit more. So, just walked through the uh, main old town. We're in like the old district. There's, uh, there's a bunch of banks around here and there are huge lines at all of them. I'm not sure exactly why. I think it has something to do with uh, the fact that Millet just got inaugurated. And one of the first things his uh, like Minister of Economy did was he... Uh, he announced that they're devaluing the peso officially down to like 800 per dollar. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means in effect. I guess we'll probably figure it out, do a little research. Maybe we'll insert a little voiceover explaining exactly what that means. I was told that people were lining up to try and get their money out of their accounts. Uh, the Argentine government has a pretty bad history of freezing and seizing people's assets uh, during times of economic turmoil. So when the government announces like a major economic reform, a lot of people try to make a run on the banks and get, uh, get their money out of their accounts. And that's what I think was happening here. But that's not why we're doing this. Today, Rafael de Sobramante. So this guy's real interesting. So, he lived here in Cordoba. He was uh, like, uh, he's kind of like a like a governor of uh, Cordoba de Tucumán. That's before he was viceroy. Viceroy is basically like the HSIC head Spaniard in charge of like a colony during the Spanish colonial empire. So uh, this is like. In the late 1700s, he was governor here, and then in the early 1800s, I think 1804, he became viceroy of Rio de la Plata, so the whole area, basically. Uh, all of, like, Argentina, and parts of non -Arg not Argentina, too, like over in what is now Uruguay, uh, was part of it as well. And uh, if you remember from a previous video about the British, uh, there was an invasion. Two of them, in fact. 1806 was the first one. And they invaded and they took over Buenos Aires. And uh, so Romante, uh, basically, there's a standing order that uh, 
get invaded and you're not going to be able to hold the city that you uh, flee inland. And so he did that. He came back to his old home in Cordoba and uh, he uh, reinstated the government and basically ruled as viceroy from Cordoba. And that's how Cordoba became, uh, that's how it became the uh, new seat of government and the new capital. Now, it's, uh, it's pretty controversial actually because uh, if you go around here, you'll see like, you know, streets and stuff named after him. There's streets and other things named after Sogramonte. So they like Sogramonte here in Cordoba. But uh, in Buenos Aires, no, they, they don't. They don't. In Buenos Aires, he's basically considered uh, a coward who just fled, you know, and didn't, didn't stay and fight for the city. It's made kind of more complicated because when he got to Cordoba, he basically like assembled, um, you know, a, a military force of about 3,000 soldiers and then went back to Buenos Aires in an attempt to, uh, to reclaim the city. It wasn't exactly successful, um, but it added pressure on the British and then eventually um, the, uh, other groups were essentially able to reclaim the city of Buenos Aires. So he kind of helped, I guess, but it, does, it doesn't help his reputation at all in Buenos Aires. He is like uh, persona non grata in Buenos Aires. So you're not going to see a, uh, any kind of uh, you know, monument or streets named after Sobramante in Buenos Aires like you do here in Cordoba. And uh, that's it. That's the first time that Cordoba was the uh, capital of, uh, well, Argentina at the time, the Rio de la Plata. Uh, also, I just want to point out, I didn't think it could get hotter and more humid than it was in Buenos Aires. But man, it's humid here. Whew. When I landed and I got in, it was like, I don't know, 90 degrees and pretty humid. And then it's sort of been like teetering on the edge of raining. You know, like when it's so humid that uh, it's like gonna drizzle a little bit and then stop and then drizzle a little bit more. It's basically like 95% humidity. Almost got run over there. It's like 95% humidity. It's not even that hot. It's like only like 80 degrees, but the humidity is just brutal. So once again, we're in a different city still sweating our huevos off. Uh, got a little turned around here. I'm not sure exactly how close we are to the spot. Uh, you know what? I'm going to cut the video here. We're going to find this place. So what I see you next, we will be at the former home, Rafael de Sabromante. in. We're in the museum. I'll give you a quick look around. Really. This is like inside the like central courtyard. There were some cool cannons over there. I asked the guy if there was a bathroom. I think he's gonna start giving a guided tour but I kind of wanted to just wander around a little bit. So uh, I asked him if there was a bathroom. He said there was one up here. And, oh no, this is it. But it gave me a chance to like sneak over here and see the inside. It is cool cannons. That mortar. These are like way, way old. Little little mini cannons there. This is really old. I mean. You can tell the construction, it's very old. Bell tower up on top. Very cool. All right, let's head back out to the front. We can come through this little courtyard. Also very cool. I mean, this was this dude's house, right? Now preserved as a museum.
cool old Spanish colonial armor. I wonder if this was... Oh wait, this is uh, Jeronimo. Yeah, Jeronimo Luis de Cabrera. This guy... I don't remember exactly. I remember reading about this guy when I was learning about Sobramante. Well, I don't know. I was, I was learning so much about uh, the history of Cordoba all at once. It all kind of blends together. We'll, we'll, uh, I guess we'll stop the video here and we'll put in a little information about this guy. Okay, so this is the, the uh, this I do remember, Fundación de Córdoba de la Nueva Andalucía. So this is when they founded Córdoba, and they did it actually like in a different place. Like to get here, we walked through the old town and through the center of, uh, of Córdoba, which is like centered around Plaza San Martín, uh, and that's really like where they officially founded it, but, you know, originally, a few years before, they founded a town on the other side of the river. And then I guess, I don't know, they decided it wasn't the right spot, so they moved it over here a few years later. But originally on the other side of the river was Cordoba de la Nueva Andalucía. In 1573 they founded it which if you ignore the way Buenos Aires like first founding in 1536 I want to say uh, basically they founded Buenos Aires twice in 1536 they came and they founded it and there was a few years where they had a settlement but there was like famine and they were getting attacked by the natives and so then they just picked up and hauled ass back to uh, Asuncion up the river and then they came back down in 1580 and they founded it again, like permanently. And uh, so if you count that as the first founding, then Cordoba was actually founded before Buenos Aires. And here you can see, this is like a copy, a reproduction of the original map of, uh, of Cordoba. Looks like this thing is coming off. See if we can stick it back up there. It's very, very humid, like I said, so even the tape is coming loose because of the humidity. But here's like a reproduction of the map. And basically they just made uh, something like, you know, seven or six or seven square, six blocks, I guess, and then one, two, three, four, five, ten blocks, six by ten. And right in the center, that church, that's uh, Plaza San Martin. And so this was basically the old part of the city that's what uh, they planned. They planned that out. But this is all way before our guy, Sobramante, whose house this is. And uh, this is stuff that we'll talk more about in another video. Uh, okay, here we go. Now we're getting into the time of Sobramante. Las Vedas de Sobramante del Gobierno. So this is when he was governor of Córdoba de Tucumán. Oh, there he is right there. So this is the guy. Rafael de Sobravante, Marquis de Sobravante. So he was awarded that title, Marquis de Sobravante. This is his desk, I guess. And his chair. And his butt. His butt sat right there. 
that we've seen in a previous video where Juan Domingo Parón's butt was, and this is where Rafael de Sobrevante's butt was. I guess these are more chairs where his butt was. That other one looks more comfortable. Anyway, here's the thing about Sobramante. You know, because, like I said, in, in Buenos Aires, they consider him a coward who fled the city. But here, they consider him, uh, you know, I mean, enough of a hero that they maintained his house and made it into a museum. You know, one of the other things was, <laughs> part of the story, he took the, like, crown treasure from Buenos Aires with him when he left. So one of the other parts of the story, if they tell it in Buenos Aires, is that he, uh, he basically stole. And he stole all the valuables and fled here at the Cordoba. But um, I don't know. It's hard to tell. I mean, he was, there was sort of a standing order from the Spanish Empire that if your, uh, your vice royalty's capital is getting attacked, and, uh, and you're not going to be able to hold it, that you need to flee inland. It was kind of the plan. But it's kind of hard to convince people <laughs> at, the, at the moment, you know, when the British are, like, sailing into the, the harbor and firing cannons, you know, into the city and then invading. It's kind of hard to uh, convince people that you were... You know, that it was a strategic retreat when you just grab all the treasure and run inland. Wow, look at all of this stuff. Beautiful old clock. Porcelain clock. And, of course, silver. Rio de la Plata. That is the, uh, the name of the the uh, Spanish colonial holding here, Rio de la Plata, because uh, there was one thing they did here in Argentina, it was silver, they had a lot of silver, and that's why the Spanish wanted it. Wow, look at this, like a chapel? Guess you have to be a pretty big wig to get your own chapel in your house. Yeah, Plata. Plata is like so integral to uh, to the history of Argentina that like people will still refer to money as plata. They'll say like uh, some video I was filming before I can't remember which, but some guy came up and asked me for money when I was in the park, and he asked for plata. Wow, look at this. So I don't know. Maybe Sobramante got a bad rap, you know? Once he did come back to uh, Cordoba here and sort of reinstate the government or the president or the uh, vice royalty from here, he did attempt to uh, organize a military force to go back and retake Buenos Aires, so it's not like he just took the money and ran, came here. And I mean, he was actually, after the whole ordeal was over, he was actually put on trial. And uh, I think, I'm not quite sure exactly how that trial went through. I think maybe it was like he was found guilty, but then he was later exonerated, if I remember correctly. I probably don't remember correctly. I don't remember much much correctly and like I said I was doing a lot of research about uh, the history of Cordoba in kind of a crash research session so maybe I am remembering incorrectly I don't know if I am do what I always do pause the video throw on some royalty free music and explain why I was so wrong
is a really nice, nice like little courtyard area. This would have been a nice place to live back in early 1800s, late 1700s. Would have been a nice place to, uh, you know, to get away from it all when another empire invades <laughs> your other city. Just like, ah, oh, you know what? Let's get out of here. Damn, these, these English. Where are we gonna go? And so Romante, hey, uh, you know, I got this, uh, I got this house. It's in Cordoba. What do you say? We just grab all this silver and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't say that, man. I don't know. I, I still can't decide if I'm on So Romante's side in this or not. You know, like I'm not a. You know, I'm not from either Cordoba or Buenos Aires, so I don't really feel like I have any stake in it. You know, I don't know. I would say. I would say there is something to be said for a strategic retreat. And I mean, what would have happened if he stayed in Buenos Aires? If he stayed in Buenos Aires, probably would have just gotten captured. The English would have taken all the silver. And I don't know, maybe the people would have been able to rise up and organize like they eventually did, throw the British out a couple years later. Maybe they wouldn't have. So, I'm trying to figure out if this, I mean, obviously, this like construction here is definitely the old construction. Stuff with the Spanish tile roofs and all of this. But I don't know if this stuff that's on the back. No, this looks this looks old too, actually. Oh. This looks like this is like uh servants quarters? Escalvos? No, esclavos? I don't actually know that word, esclavos. Cordoba durante la época colonial fue lugar de tráfico de esclavos. Oh, esclavos. That might be slaves. We might be in a slave quarter here. Definitely gonna have to look up esclavos. I'm sure I translated it in the subtitle. Definitely doesn't look as nice as uh, the Sobramante part. So. Maybe this was a slave quarter. So looks like there's two more, but they're closed. Oh yeah, this is not a good sign. That looks like it has room for legs and a lock. Okay, I think that actually was a slave quarter. Well. That's one in the con column for Sobramante. But such was the time. And actually, Buenos Aires originally, in like the early colonial period, um, it wasn't really a hub for anything because the Spanish were sailing around uh, South America through the Straits of Magellan to get at the, uh, the more valuable, like, um, trading places on the uh, on the Pacific side of South America and Buenos Aires for a long time was just like a uh, a smuggling hub they would smuggle like they still had a lot of uh, agriculture beef and whatnot and they would like smuggle out leather and stuff like that but eventually when the slave trade really really kicked off and started to become like extremely extremely um, like, I don't know how to, how to word it, like, very, very uh, organized and systematized. 
than uh, Argentina and Buenos Aires specifically on the coast became like a major slave trading port. It's old bells here. So to see that there was a slave quarter here doesn't uh, doesn't actually surprise me. Oh, so this this like tower thing, this is the seal of the of Cordoba uh, officially, and there's actually a place down on the outskirts of the city, on the edge of the city, uh, where the Arch of Cordoba. They built this arch. This is in the 20th century, but the it's like two towers like that with an arch connecting them, and they made the towers look specifically like that to match the seal of Cordoba. It's pretty cool bit of trivia. Maybe we'll go see that place. It's a little ways out, but maybe we can catch a bus or something out there. Check it out. I know you can go up to the top of the arch and like take a look around. Here's some more. Hmm, what are these? Maybe these are to like light signal fires. This is what I'm guessing. I'm guessing these are for fire. Not sure though. Some sort of mortar and pestle for mortaring things and pestling things. Where are we going now? Another little, little courtyard. You can see like, even though this is in the old part of the city, if you look right over there, it's a giant skyscraper. Because, uh, you know, they maintain this, but everything else around here, this is like the center of the city. So, uh, there's a lot of big towers, big skyscrapers around here. Hola, buen día. Like I said, there's actually a lot of banks around here. And right outside, there's a huge line. Definitely not for coming in here. It's like me and that guy I just walked past. Those are like really like the only people in here. And uh, everybody else is outside waiting in line for the bank. Which, like I said, still not quite sure exactly why the lines are so long today, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the the devaluation of the peso. I don't know. Maybe everybody's trying to get their money out. Who knows? Rough times. It's really rough times in Argentina, man. And it's going to get rougher. It's going to get a lot rougher. They even said, you know, Millet and uh, his, uh, his cabinet ministers and everybody, they have made no sugarcoating at all of it. They've said, it's going to be tough, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. And hopefully it does get better afterwards, but it's definitely going to get worse. And they are not pulling any punches when they're telling the public about what exactly they're going to do, or they plan to do, and what exactly their results are going to be. It's not going to be good. Well, that's a bit of a tangent. Eh, let's not talk about that. I think we've seen pretty much everything here. So that was it, Rafael de Sobramante. I guess you can, uh, can make your own, form your own opinion now on Sobramante. Because like I said, very controversial figure. There are a lot of very controversial figures in Argentine history. But uh, so was he. Oh, actually, you know what? Hold on. There's a whole second floor. <laughs> okay, the video continues. But yeah, form your own opinion on Sobramante. Was he a... Uh, uh, you know, smart and pragmatic leader who decided to uh, make a strategic retreat to protect the vice royalty? Or was he a coward who took the money and ran? Who knows? Hola, buen día. Oh, yeah. There's all kinds of other stuff up here. More porcelain.
hilarious. Ooh, old paper fans. Wow. Man. Must be really hard to preserve a paper fan from like a hundred or two hundred and what, twenty years ago? Who are these guys? I don't recognize any of these names. Probably gonna have to do a little more research, but man. It's one hell of a mustache. Look at that mustache. Sir, I commend you on your mustache. I, whoa. Speaking of mustaches, look at this. I really should know more. <laughs> I know a little bit of the history. This is the thing with, with uh, you know, a place like Argentina, where the history is, is, is goes back. You know, 1573, they founded the city. Oh, this may be. I think this is his bedroom. But yeah, when the history goes back that far, it's like you start getting into a rabbit hole of uh, learning about history. You just get in there so deep. And I, I <laughs> there's still so much. It's just scratching the surface, you know? There's still so much to know, so much to learn. Oh, so this is a map. Really old map. Wow, look at this. Let's see if we can see where everything is. I mean, this is like all of South America here. Here's uh, Brazil. Let's see, where is, okay, here we go. Rio de la Plata. And there's Buenos Aires. It's like right here. You see it? Buenos Aires. And then, let's see, further up river, where is it? Where's Cordoba? Cordoba would be, yeah, Tucumán. So it would be like up here? Oh man, I can't. <laughs> I'm probably like looking right at it right now and missing it. And then up here, this is the Vice Royalty of Peru, which actually was uh, was founded first, and uh, Argentina, or the Vice Royalty of La Plata, or the Rio de La Plata, was part of the Vice Royalty of Peru before. There's another bedroom. Beds are very short, also. I said it before, I'll say it again. I would not do well trying to sleep in one of these beds. Way too big. Let's see, I think this is the last of the rooms upstairs. Like a. Oh, maybe not. Like a sitting room. Maybe dining, maybe they eat here. Salon, lounge. Giant old rug, whew, look at this. I mean, this is like someone hooked this entire thing by hand. And it's huge, giant. Here we 
we are. Okay, now this. Look at this bed. This has got to be his room, right? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they, these are all just different rooms for his family and little porcelain figurines. Really, really amazing, like, work done on those things. Oh. Good old-fashioned chamber pot. Back in the day, I mean, you know, middle of the night, you got to do what you got to do. Pull that thing out from under the bed and do your business. Can we all just uh, say how thankful we should be for the Palacio de Aguas Corrientes <laughs> and running water? Uh, well, I think that's it. I think we've seen what we can see. It's so quiet in here and outside with like all the traffic and hundreds of people lined up for the break. It's like chaos out there. Ah, such is the way. Such is the way. Anyway, I think we'll head back outside and that'll be it for our first video here in Cordoba. Flip the camera back around. Take a look at my sweaty face. I think that's going to be it. And, uh, yeah, I think that was a good one. A good day. Good thing to check out. We can take our final shot right here in front of this tree right in the courtyard. All right, so we're going to have more videos from Cordoba a lot. There's a lot of good history here and a lot of cool stuff to see. Um, but for now, that's going to be it, and we'll see you in the next video.